Now let's proceed with uh, mesh analysis of circuits with resistors and independent voltage sources. I have put down the same circuit that I considered earlier and I will identify the three mesh currents. Okay, let me call this mesh number 1. So this is current I1 and this is I2 and this is I3. Okay? And as we saw the current in this branch is I1, this is I2 and this is I3 whereas the current here is I1 minus I3, current over there is I2 minus I3 and current over there is I1 minus I2. Okay? So, what I will do is I will write Kirchhoff's voltage law equations around each mesh. So, let me take mesh number 1. Okay, and let us say I will go in the same direction as the mesh current uh, that is clockwise direction and I will write the voltage drops across all resistances to be equal to the voltage rise across the voltage source in the loop. Okay, So, this is the way I choose to write it just like for nodal analysis while writing Kirchhoff's current law equations I wrote the sum of all currents going out of a node through conductances equals the sum of independent currents being injected into the node. Here also I will write sum of voltage drops while traversing the mesh to be equal to the voltage rise due to the independent voltage source in the mesh. Okay? So, if I do that what will I get? The voltage drop across R 1 1 is simply I 1 times R 1 1 and the voltage drop across R 1 3 is its current I 1 minus I 3 times R 1 3. And the voltage drop across R 1 2 is I 1 minus I 2 that is the current through R 1 2 times R 1 2 and that will be equal to the rise of voltage V 1. Okay. Now, this is the uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law equation around this loop. Okay. We have implicitly used Kirchhoff's current law because this current here that is the mesh current I 1, the current here is I 3. So, we wrote the current in R 1 3 to be I 1 minus I 3 that is basically Kirchhoff's uh, current law applied at this node. Okay. So, we have implicitly used Kirchhoff's current law also while writing this and this is exactly the same thing that we did with nodal analysis. We were writing Kirchhoff's current law equations, but we were implicitly using Kirchhoff's voltage law when we wrote down that the voltage across each branch is difference between two node voltages. So, that is for mesh number 1 and if I group terms containing the same mesh current, I will have I 1 times R 1 1 plus R 1 2 plus R 1 3 minus I 2 times R 1 2 minus I 3 times R 1 3 to be equal to V 1. Okay. What I have done is I have collected the coefficients of the mesh currents. Now, the pattern must be very obvious to you. What is the coefficient of a given mesh current? I am writing the equation for mesh number 1 and I 1 is the current for mesh number 1. So, then the coefficient of I 1 will be the sum of all resistances in that mesh. Okay. So, I 1 belongs to mesh 1. So, the coefficient of I 1 will be sum of all resistances in mesh number 1 when you are writing the equation for mesh number 1. And what is this R 1 2? You can see that that is the boundary between mesh 1 and mesh 2 or R 1 2 belongs to both mesh 1 and mesh 2. So, the coefficient of I 2 will be negative of the resistance common to mesh 1 and mesh 2. Okay. 
and finally R13 what is that that's the resistance common to mesh 1 and mesh 3 so that's the coefficient of I3 that is negative of the resistance common to mesh number 1 and mesh number 3 okay so what's the summary here if you write the kirchhoff's voltage law equation around a particular mesh it will have terms containing all the mesh currents okay now the coefficient of uh, the mesh current the coefficient of the mesh current for that mesh would be the sum of all resistances in the mesh and the coefficient of the other mesh currents would be the negative of resistance which is common to this mesh and that particular mesh okay so again the pattern is exactly the same as nodal analysis right So, let us write the equation for all meshes, mesh number 1 we have already done that, it is I 1 R 1 1 plus R 1 2 plus R 1 3 minus I 2 minus I 2 R 1 2 minus I 3 R 1 3 equals V 1. Okay. Let us do it for mesh 2, then again we have the voltage drops right and I will take all the voltage drops as I go in the clockwise direction. So, if I take the voltage drop in that direction that is like this, you see that it is I 2 minus I 1 times R 1 2. Okay. In this direction, it was I 1 minus I 2 times R 1 2. In the opposite direction, it is I 2 minus I 1 times R 1 2. So, I will have I 2 minus I 1 times R 1 2 okay. and I have R 2 3 here. The current through that is I 2 minus I 3. So, I 2 minus I 3 times R 2 3. Remember, I am going around this mesh and I am considering voltage drops in that direction. Okay the voltage that drops as I traverse the loop in clockwise direction. So, that is I 2 minus I 3 times R 2 3 plus I 2 times R 2 2 because the current through R 2 2 is just I 2 and that is equal to the voltage rise as I go in the clockwise direction. Okay. So, when I go from here to there the voltage actually falls by V 2 or the voltage rises by minus V 2. So, this is equal to minus V 2. Okay. And again I collect all the coefficients, I will have minus I 1 times R 1 2 plus I 2 times R 1 2 plus R 2 2 plus R 2 3 minus I 3 times R 2 3 to be equal to minus V 2. Okay. So, this is again something that follows the same pattern. For mesh number 2, the coefficient of I 2 will be sum of all resistances in the mesh. Coefficient of I 1 will be the negative of resistance common to mesh 1 and 2. Coefficient of I 3 will be negative of the resistance common to meshes 2 and 3. And just for completeness, I will do it fully for uh, mesh number 3 as well. And you see that going in the clockwise direction, Again, we have the voltage drop this way is I 3 minus I 2 times R 1 3. The voltage drop that way is I 3 R 3 3 and the voltage drop this way is I 3 minus I 2 times R 2 3. So, if I are writing the equation for uh, mesh number 3, the current I 3 will have positive coefficients. Okay, That is something to keep in mind. So, I have I 3 minus I 2 times R 1 3 plus I 3 
R33 plus I3 minus I2 R23 to be equal to 0. There is no independent voltage source in this mesh. Okay. Again collecting the coefficients, I have minus I1 R13 minus I2 R23 plus R13 plus R23 plus R33 times I3 to be equal to 0. Okay. Now, I will put this in a matrix form, which is convenient. I have this times the mesh current variables I 1, I 2, I 3 being equal to the independent uh, sources, the source vector which is V 1 minus V 2 and 0 for our particular circuit. Okay. So, this is of the form the resistance matrix times the vector of unknowns, the vector of mesh currents to be equal to the vector of independent voltage sources. Okay. the three rows are equations for the three meshes and you see exactly similar properties to what we had when we had uh, nodal analysis with uh, resistors and independent current sources. We have a symmetric matrix, symmetric resistance matrix and the diagonal elements correspond to total resistance in the mesh and the off diagonal it is the negative of resistance common to corresponding meshes. Okay. So, now you can uh, by matrix inversion solve for the unknown mesh currents I and from those currents you can get the individual branch currents. Okay. For instance, we have already identified that the current through R 1 1 is I 1, R 2 2 is I 2 and R 3 3 is I 3. Similarly, the current through R 1 3 is I 1 minus I 3, R 1 2 is I 1 minus I 2 and R 2 3 is I 2 minus I 3. So, from the mesh currents you identify all the branch currents and from that you can identify all the branch voltages. Of course, for voltage sources the branch voltage is independent of the current, but in general you get the branch voltages from the currents that you have calculated and the I V relationships of the element. Okay. So, you first solve for mesh currents, the 
mesh current vector equals the inverse of the resistance matrix times the vector of sources and you find all the branch currents from the mesh currents and finally, find all the branch voltages from mesh currents and element relationships. Okay. So, with this you have the complete solution to the circuit. Okay.